Hello everyone. Today we will gain some basic knowledge about the constitution of India through the multiple choice question. So without wasting any time, let's start with it. The first question is, what is the maximum term of a chairperson and the members of the National Human Rights Commission? Options are A. 2 years B. 3 years C, 5 years, or D, 6 years? The correct answer to this question is B, that is 3 years. The chairperson and the members of the National Human Rights Commission hold office for a term of 3 years or until they attain the age of 70 years, whichever is earlier. The next question is, who appoints the Chief Information Commission of the Central Information Commission? Options are A. Rajya Sabha B. A committee of Lok Sabha C. President or D. Prime Minister The correct answer to this question is C. That is the President. The Chief Information Commissioner and the other members of the Central Information Commission are appointed by the President of India on the recommendation of the committee consisting of Prime Minister as Chairperson the leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha and the union cabinet minister as the member of the committee. The next question is, who appoints the state chief information commission? Options are A. President B. Prime Minister C. Governor or D. Chief Minister The correct answer to this question is option C, that is Governor. The State Chief Information Commissioner and the State Information Commissioner are appointed by the Governor on the recommendations of the committee consisting of the Chief Minister as a chairperson. Next question is, which type of body was the Planning Commission of India is? Options are A. A Constitution Body B. Extra Constitutional Body C. Statutory body or D, none of the above. The correct answer to this question is option B, that is, Planning Commission of India is an extra constitutional body. The Planning Commission was established in the year 1950 and it was neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body. It was then a non constitutional body or an extra constitutional body. It was not created by the Constitution of India at all. The next question is, in which year the second backward class commission was appointed with B.B. Mandel as chairperson, chairman? Options are A. 1971 B. 1973 C. 1977 or D. 1979 the correct answer to this question is option D, that is 1979. The second backward class commission was appointed by the President of India in the year 1979 with B.B. Mandel as chairman. It has submitted its report in the year 1980. The next question is which article of the constitution contains special provision with respect to educational grant of the benefit of Anglo-Indian Committee? Options are Article 335 B. Article 337 C. Article 339 or D. Article 341 The correct answer to this question is Article 337 that is option B. The Article 337 of the Constitution of India contains special provision with respect to education grant for the benefit of Anglo-Indian Committee. Article 336 contains special provision for Anglo-Indian Committee in certain services. So let's now see what is Article 337. The Article 337 talks about the special provision. It states that the special provision with respect to the education grant for the benefit of Anglo-Indian community during the first three financial year after the commencement of this constitution and 
the same shall be grant if any shall be made by the union and by each state for the benefit of anglo indian community in respect of the education as they were made in the financial year ending on the 31st day of march 1948 during every succeeding period of 3 years the granting may be less but 10% than those for the immediately preceding period of the 3 years provided that at the end of the 10 years from the commencement of this constitution such grant to the extent to which there special concession to the anglo indian community shall cease provided further that no educational institution shall be entitled to receive any grant under this article unless at least 40% of the annual admission therein are made available to the members of the community other than the anglo indian community so now let's move on to the next question what are the principles of doctrine of private defense a anybody whose life is threatened by grave danger need not wait for the state aid b it is not punitive c the rights cannot be availed for the sake of self gratification d all of the above the correct answer to this question is option d that is all the above are the basic principles of doctrine of private defense there are some principles of doctrine of private defense that are enumerated as under them these are first anybody whose life is threatened by grave danger need not wait for the state aid unless such aid is available second it is protective or preventive and not punitive third the right cannot be availed for the sake of self gratification or to satisfy one's malicious intent and fourth the right must be exercised when there is real and immediate threat and a reasonable apprehension of such threat the next question is what does kisas mean in islamic criminal law options are a limit or barrier b blood money c retaliation d none of the above the correct answer to this question is option c that is retaliation is a true meaning of kisas in islamic criminal law kisas in islamic jurisprudence means retaliation it is a form of punishment it means hand for a hand a foot for a foot nose for a nose a tooth for a tooth and life for life and so forth let's move on to the next question which section of the ipc states that if any person of unsound mind or mentally ill person commits any offense due to his unsoundness of mind who is not capable of knowing the nature of the act and has no knowledge of wrong or right or law the law is no offense options are a section 82 b section 83 c section 84 or d section 85 the correct answer to this question is option c that is section 84 talks about the unsoundness of mind and the crime done by a person in his unsoundness of mind so let's not talk about what is section 84 section 84 talks about the act of a person of unsound mind it states that nothing is an offense which is done by a person who at the time of doing it by the reason of unsoundness of mind is incapable of knowing the nature of the act or that he is doing what is either wrong or contrary to the law So let's move on to the next question. The Nirbhaya Act was passed in which year? Options are A, two thousand thirteen, B, two thousand fourteen, C, two thousand fifteen, or D, two thousand sixteen. The correct answer to this question is option A. That is, the Nirbhaya Act was passed in the year two thousand thirteen by way of the Indian Amendment. Amendment in the Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Act, Code of Criminal Procedure, nineteen seventy three. 
This act and an amendment was related to the sexual offences and offences related to women. The amendment is also known as the Criminal Amendment Act 2013. The next question is, which of the following statements are correct with respect to the cigarettes and other tobacco products? Act 2003. Options are Statement 1. Advertisement of tobacco products including cigarettes is prohibited. Second, tobacco products cannot be sold to a person below the age of 18 years. And third, a fine up to rupees 200 can be imposed for smoking in public places. Options are A. Only first statement B. Only second statement C. Only first and third statement or D. First, second and third statement The correct answer to this question is option D. That is all the above. The first, second and third statement are correct with respect to the cigarette and other tobacco product Act 2003. According to the Cigarette and Other Tobacco Products Act 2013, the advertisement of tobacco products, including cigarette, is prohibited. A tobacco product cannot be sold to a person below the age of 18 years and a fine up to Rs 200 shall be imposed on anybody for smoking in public places. The next question is Who decides whether a juvenile criminal in the age of group of 16 to 18 should be tried as an adult or no, not? Options are A. Juvenile Justice Board B. Supreme Court C. Chief Justice of India or D. President The correct answer to this question is Option A, that is, Juvenile Justice Board. The Juvenile Justice Act 2015 allows the Juvenile Justice Board to decide whether a juvenile criminal in the age of the group 16 to 18 should be tried as an adult or not. The next question is, the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005 incorporates which of the following forms of violence against women? State first physical violence, second emotional violence, third sexual violence, or fourth economic violence. The options are A only first and second, B only second and third, C only first, second, and third, or D first, second, third, or fourth. The correct answer is option D that is all the statements first, second, third, fourth incorporates the violence against women. Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act incorporates the following form of violence against women that is physical violence, emotional violence, sexual violence and economic violence. The next question is in which year the Institutes of Technology Act was enacted? Options are A. 1960 B. 1961 C. 1962 or D. 1963 The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, in 1961, the Institute of Technology Act was enacted. Next question is, the Saudi Prevention Act 1987 is a law enacted by the government of which state? Options are A. Andhra Pradesh B. Rajasthan C. Maharashtra or D. Gujarat the correct answer is option B, that is Rajasthan. The Sadi Prevention Act of 1987 is a law enacted by Rajasthan government in 1987. It became an act of the Parliament of India, the enactment of the Commission of the Sadi Prevention Act of 1987. The next question is, the Indian Evidence Act was enacted in which year? A. 1872 B. 1880 C. 1921 or D. 1949 The correct answer to this question is A. That is 1872 The next question is The Institute 
Indian Institute of Management Act was enacted in which year? Options are A. 2016 B. 2017 C. 2018 or D. 2019 The correct answer to this question is B. 2017 the Indian Institute of Management Act of 2017 declared the Indian Institute of Management as institution of national importance. It enabled them to offer degrees and further make substantial changes in their administration. Next question is, a right of the children to free and educate, compulsory education act requires all private schools to reserve how many percentage of seats for poor and other categories of children? Options are a. 15% B. 20% C. 25% or D. 27% The correct answer to this question is C. 25% Next question is Which of the following are the functions of National Biodiversity Authority? First, regulation of acts prohibited under the, the Act Second, advise the government of India on conservation of biodiversity. Third, advise the government of India on selection of the bi biological heritage sites. Or fourth, take appropriate steps for opposing grant of the intellectual property right in foreign countries arising from the use of biological resources or associated traditional knowledge. Options are A. Only one and two. B. Only 2 and 3, C, only 1, 2 and 3, and D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. The correct answer to this question is option D, that is, all the above statements are the functions of National Biodiversity Authority. The functions of the National Biodiversity Authority are as follows. Regulation of Act prohibited under the Act. Second, Advise the Government of India on the conservation of biodiversity. Third, advise the Government of India on selection of biological heritage sites. And fourth, taking appropriate measure for opposing grant of intellectual property rights in foreign countries arising from the use of biological resources or associated traditional knowledge. The next question is, the Wildlife Protection Act was enacted in which year? Options are A. 1970 B. 1972 C. 1975 or D. 1986 The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, in 1972, Wildlife Protection Act was enacted.